Uh, so Donald Trump was asked to clarify comments he made last week about the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The former president, of course, praised a wealthy donor whom he awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom as having gotten the better award, his words, compared to the Medal of Honor, because those are recipients who often are shot several times are dead, as Donald Trump said. Uh, here's what he said on Thursday and then his response to an NBC affiliate on Saturday. I have to say, Miriam, uh, I watched Sheldon sitting so proud in the White House when we gave Miriam the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That's the highest award you can get as a civilian. It's the equivalent of the Congressional Medal of Honor, but civilian version. It's actually much better because everyone gets the Congressional Medal of Honor, that's soldiers. They're either in very bad shape because they've been hit so many times by bullets or they're dead. She gets it and she's a healthy, beautiful woman. It's very I clarify that because so many veterans are upset about that, including here in Pennsylvania. No, I didn't hear that. I only heard when I say better, I would rather in a certain way get it because people that get the Congressional Medal of Honor, which I've given to many, are often horribly wounded or dead. Uh, they're often dead. They get it posthumously. And uh, when you get the Congressional Medal of Honor, I always consider that to be the ultimate, but it is a painful thing to get it. When you get the Presidential Medal of Freedom, it's usually for other things, like you've achieved great success in sports or you've achieved great you know, success someplace else. When you get the Medal of Honor, generally speaking, and I've met many of them and I've seen the families of many of them, this is an, an incredible honor, but it was a statement that it's much more painful to get because they're oftentimes in very bad shape. I've seen them come up and uh, they've suffered greatly, whereas the Presidential Medal of Freedom, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody suffered other than they've, you know, they've worked hard and they've done great things. One's a military award, one's a civilian award, uh, but sometimes very painful to get the other. I don't know that that really clears it up. Um, let's bring in P Pete Buttigieg. He is a retired naval officer and, of course, also the Secretary of Transportation. But this Wednesday, he's going to be speaking at the Democratic National Convention in his personal capacity, when the theme will be a fight for our freedoms this morning. Again, not speaking on behalf of the Biden administration. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, what, what do you think the message, we've been asking this all morning, what, what should the message be uh, in, in Chicago this week for the Democrats? Well, uh, you know, the thing that really excites me and I think the really important contrast is that the message of the convention here in Chicago is going to be about the American people. It sounds like a very simple thing. It could even sound like a, a cliche, but there's something very significant about this because the Trump Vance ticket uh, views politics as being all about them. Uh, we're certainly proud of our candidate. We're excited about Kamala Harris. We're excited about Tim Walz. You're going to see them featured. You're going to see them highlighted. But part of what's so important about them is they get that it's not about them. And so what you're going to see, I think, is a convention that highlights how when we use the tools of policy and politics and government the right way, it makes us better off in our lives. It, it makes life more affordable. It makes our community stronger. It secures our freedoms. And I think that's what uh, we're going to hear. Uh, and that really is one of the main contrasts, right? Uh, people who live and work for others the way that, that uh, our uh, ticket, top of the ticket does. And someone like Donald Trump who cannot comprehend putting others first, as you saw in those remarks. You know, uh, I was a naval officer, not to nitpick, but uh, I want to be sure we're technically correct. I'm not a retired naval officer, but I did uh, proudly serve in the Naval Reserve. I remember when I went to uh, officer training in, in Newport, Rhode Island, uh, outside every one of our rooms, they put a little biography of just one of the people from the Navy who won the Medal of Honor and a little write-up of how they got that Medal of Honor. You would feel, you'd feel about this big uh, compared to these people. And maybe that's why uh, those stories just break Donald Trump's brain. He literally cannot comprehend that kind of sacrifice. And he certainly cannot comprehend a concept of politics that is not about you, not about your glorification, but about what you can do to make other people better off. I'm curious. We, we've we've heard from uh, Donald Trump this morning and playing clips throughout the weekend. Chris Matthews, uh, Claire McCaskill, others have talked about uh, just how off the reservation he is. I mean, Coral Rove has as well. Lindsey Graham. I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, how do Democrats handle 
the distractions from Donald Trump better this year than they have in past years when he's he's talking about how it's it's much better to get an award uh, that if if you're a, a rich donor, rich Republican donor, than than being honored uh, for for ultimate military service, or him saying he's better looking than Kamala Harris, or him him attacking Peggy Noonan, or him attacking anybody who doesn't uh, bow down and praise him. I'm just curious, how how do Democrats uh, not take the bait uh, and stay focused on what they need to stay focused on to win this election? Well, I think you were exactly right to describe it as distraction. The challenge, of course, is you have to say something. If he attacks the service of uh, military uh, service members who earn the Medal of Honor, uh, if he you know, goes to the National Association of Black Journalists and blurts out something racist, obviously you have to deal with that. You have to deal with that quickly and then come right back to our message. Because I, I do think this is a kind of strategy. You might ask, why would a politician do things like that? But you know, going all the way back to the days of him denigrating the service of John McCain, it's very clear that he does this for a reason. Uh, it's a twofold reason. One is he wants people talking about him. And then two, he wants people not talking about uh, the difference between our agenda and his agenda, especially when you look at uh, Project 2025. It's an amazing thing that Project 2025 is kind of the scandal of the year for the Republicans, the thing that they have had to do the most damage control around. Because uh, look at what Project 2025 is. It's just their policies. It's nothing but a write-up of uh, what they plan to do. And they really don't want the American people focused on how Trump is about tax cuts for the rich and we're trying to make sure we have a fairer tax code, or how Donald Trump uh, demolished the right to choose in this country, and how Kamala Harris will lead the work to restore that right to choose, or any other issue uh, from climate to gun safety to education, you name it, where the American people strongly agree with us and strongly disagree with him. They don't want us talking about that. They don't want us talking about his record. Uh, results that even if you go by the measures uh, that conservatives tend to pay the most attention to, like crime rates, uh, that was worse under Donald Trump. Uh, if you're one of those folks who, who thinks of the economy in terms of the stock market, uh, you know, there's a lot more to the economy to the stock market, but to some people that's pretty much the same thing. The Dow and the S&P uh, were worse on, under Donald Trump than they were under Biden-Harris. Energy production, one of the things you hear Republicans talk the most about domestic energy production is higher under Biden-Harris than it was uh, under Trump. He can't afford for us to be talking about that, so every couple of days he's going to blurt out something outrageous uh, so that we're talking about that instead. Yeah, you know, it is crazy. I mean, you talk about just those three issues. Crime, worse under Donald Trump than it is right now under Joe Biden. The stock market, much higher than it was under Donald Trump. And, you know, he'll go drill, baby, drill. The fact is the United States right now uh, producing more oil than any other country in history. Uh, of course, that cuts both ways for Democrats, but for Republicans who are always talking about it, uh, not necessarily a positive. Pete Buttigieg, thank you so much for joining us. As always, love talking to you. Hope you'll come back soon. Look forward to it. Thanks for having me in. Leave it to Lieutenant Buttigieg to set the record straight on the crooked cadet, who, in all fairness, I suppose, is supremely qualified to speak about the Congressional Medal of Honor. You're braver than any Vietnam vet because you're out there screwing a lot of women. Congressional Medal of Honor in actuality. As a kid, I was taught by my dad to honor veterans for their service. He was a decorated vet, a World War II Purple Heart Bronze Star recipient. But after years of marching and patriotic parades with my dad and his DAV old soldier pals, I look forward to this week especially because after years of watching Trump short shrifting servicemen and women and using our flag, the flag that my father fought for, as his own cheap personal prop, well, I can't wait to see people of actual character take the stage, instead of the actual cartoon characters, for example, that we saw during that garish MAGA convention. Well, I'm sure dear old dad would just love to see the Democrats' temperament, character, and virtue on full display this week. Those are the qualities that define this country for so long. Well, until it temporarily fell into the tiny hands of Commander McBragg and his milksop MAGA minions. No, this documented draft dodger repeatedly slams America's most honorable citizens, which seems kind of stupid to me if you're the guy who's banking 
from the military to strong arm your Project 2025, Agenda 47, Seven Mountain Mandate. You know, they're all born of the same reprehensible impulse. So as the bone spur warrior continues to shoot himself in the foot in public, well, we'll be vigilant here at Occupy Democrat to report from the front lines of social media and count the casualties of hubris and arrogance as they fall one by one between here and Election Day.